This is the first video I'm filming since hitting 1,000 subscribers, so I just firstly want to say a huge thank you to all of you who have made that happen. Really appreciate it. But I want to give you value and lessons that I've learned from building a channel from the ground up and hitting the first sort of milestone on YouTube. There are so many things I think you'll find really valuable from my experience. I want to be clear as well that we're not talking about a tight beat channel that I've grown. That's a very different sort of video. This channel that I've built is dedicated to producers and helping producers. So the first lesson is value. And that's the key. Whether you're looking to start your own producer YouTube channel, grow social media, make connections with other producers, whatever it is, the key is to provide value and help to the audience you're targeting. This doesn't even have to just apply to producers. Of course, that's what I've done and I'm doing is providing value and help for producers. But if your target is more artists, you can do the same thing, but provide value and help for artists. That can actually be a really valuable way to do it. Be a producer and target artists by offering them help from a producer's perspective. Whatever your audience is and whatever format you're on, the best way I've found to grow, the times where I've had the best performing videos, the times where I've had the quickest rate of growth, is when I provide information on things that my audience, that producers want to know about, want help with. Being genuine and looking to actually provide your audience with true and helpful information is a way of building an audience that doesn't just watch you, but follows you and listens to you. Because after a certain amount of time watching you, they trust that you actually have their best intentions at the forefront of what you're doing. If you're trying to be all sly about it, feeding little information, regurgitating things that other people have already said, trying to sort of cheat the system, people will be able to tell. I'm not saying that everything in your videos has to be completely brand new information, but it's about saying it in your own way and in a way that best helps your audience, as opposed to trying to get a large amount of views quickly. That's the key with starting a YouTube channel and making content on social media as a producer. You have to play the long game because it's a hard topic to make content on. It's not as straightforward as a lot of other industries, but keep providing value over a long period of time and you will grow. The second lesson is to learn from others. What you're doing right now is exactly what I'm talking about. Listening to other people's experiences on YouTube or Instagram or TikTok or whatever and watching their videos, seeing what they do, seeing how they edit their videos, how long their videos are, how they structure them. Don't directly copy everything from someone, but there's absolutely no harm in taking kind of one thing from a few different people and applying it to your own and kind of informing how you make your videos. There are a lot of producers on each different platform to learn from and take aspects of their content creation and apply them to your own. The third lesson is not being too attached to metrics. Of course, it's great and important to study analytics to give you an upper hand. By all means, that's great. But after every video being obsessed with the amount of views, likes, comments, watch time is so draining and ultimately it's probably detrimental. It will make the whole process of being a producer on social media a lot more difficult because there is just so much variation in video performance on all the platforms. You've got to remember that you're posting videos into a different algorithm on each different platform that you post on and each video you post will perform differently and the differences in those performances can be massive especially here on YouTube. I also feel like for a producer specifically that's even more the case because there are some producer related topics that just seem to do really well that get a lot of traction that get a lot of views a lot of the time for example growing a tight beat channel but then there are other producer related topics which just get very little traction and I'm not saying if you have a low performing video it's the algorithm's fault and not yours but my point is that some videos and producer topics will perform really well and others won't the example being this very channel if you look you'll see my highest performing video is about 13,000 views and my lowest performing video is about 82 views I think so if I was completely obsessed with the performance of every video that I make I would have been thrown in every flipping direction by this point every single week by now which brings me nicely onto the next lesson which I've learned to be crucial and that is consistency. Now, before you think that's obvious and I hear that all the time, I'm not talking about the posting three times every day and not missing a day ever. That's not the kind of consistency I'm talking about. I learned from doing that for a while that one, it reduces the quality of the content that you post, not even necessarily the quality of how you film it and how it looks, but the quality of what you're creating, like the ideas you have for each video, the actual topic of the video. It just encourages you to post for the sake of it and push bad content out there. Two is that it's just too much to keep up with posting that many videos on YouTube, Instagram, and TikTok. I would literally forget to post a lot of those videos because I'd post three times a day, obviously spread them out across the day, which means I'd be posting one video in the evening. And a lot of the times I would just forget. Three is that it burns you out, creatively especially. You're constantly worrying about what each video is gonna be, what new thing can I do? 
and to think of so many ideas for just a week of videos isn't sustainable and will drain you creatively. So that's not the kind of consistency I'm talking about. I'm talking about a comfortable, regular pattern of posting. For me on YouTube, that's once a week. And I know that's probably all I can manage because it takes me a full day pretty much to create a video from start to finish. One full day out of five a week. So for me, the consistency is meaning that regular pattern. The benefits I've seen from that are just so great. A video on YouTube every week, and of course there are some weeks that I miss it and that's absolutely fine. But for the majority of the time, it is a video a week. And just having your channel consistently ticking over with people watching you, interacting, coming back again. YouTube and other platforms, but specifically YouTube, suggest you a lot more when you get into that cycle. They kind of push people into that cycle which you've got going because they can see that it's strong and it really did boost my channel. So find a posting pattern that suits you, whether that's like me posting once a week on YouTube or once every two weeks or posting three times a week on social media or twice a week, whatever it is stick to it and make sure it's sustainable. The last thing I think you might find valuable is that the key to growing this channel for me has been to have my own voice, say things in the way that I want to say them, have my own style in literally writing and talking out the videos, in the video editing, in the thumbnails, and just be myself and be yourself on social media. In that as well, that means not comparing yourself to others and studying their growth and getting jealous over the amount of subscribers they have or followers or the amount of views they get, etc. There's no use to growing and being successful as a producer if it means losing your individuality and your own style, which is particularly important as producers because it makes you a lot more attractive as a producer to work with if you have your own style. If you're an individual clearly comfortable being an individual and not just trying to fit in and create in the same way to someone else. That's not contradicting what I was saying earlier about taking aspects from different people's video content creation. There's a big difference between being inspired by someone and taking an aspect of their video creation and applying it to your own. An example could be the way they title their videos. Using that is different to acting and speaking in a different way to how you would in reality. It's also so much, again, just more sustainable and comfortable for you if you're doing things in your own way and with your own voice, individuality and style. That way you can be creative with videos and content because we all know how hard at times it can be as a music producer to spend so much time and effort on making videos and content. It will be a lot harder for you if you have to put on a front and facade and not just be your natural sort of self. So there we go. Those are the kind of lessons I've learned as I've built up this channel from the ground and reached a thousand subscribers. Thank you so much again for helping us reach that milestone. Hopefully we can kind of keep this going and continue building the community. If you want to be a part of that community even more, you can hit the first link in the description. That's the link to the Discord server. That's a place where we can kind of really connect and talk to each other and discuss all this sort of thing um, and what it's like to be a producer. So feel free to join that and I'll see you in the next video.